Hello everybody. Today's mini tutorial lesson is on the Tune Image option in Snapseed. Tune Image is full of a lot of different variables. It includes auto-adjusted, brightness, ambience, contrast, saturation, shadows, highlights, and warmth. That's a lot, but it really does a lot. I spend more time in this Tune Image part of Snapseed probably than any other. So let's move on into today's image. We'll make it quick. We'll make it easy. You'll love it. Here is the image we will be using for today's lesson. I've already opened it in Snapseed, as you can see. Snapseed is open. You got the Snapseed indicators all around the frame. The very first thing, as always, you do, of course, is touch this little tool at the bottom to bring up the palette of options in Snapseed. Tune image is the one we'll deal with today. So touch tune image and we open it. The very first thing that you can do is let the computer tune the image to the way it thinks is appropriate. You do that by touching this little magic wand down here at the bottom. When you touch that right up here at the top you'll see a little indicator that says auto adjusted. So now the computer or the app has done what it thinks needs to be done to make this picture perfect. Well, to make it a uh, picture it thinks is good. I don't like it. If you like it, great. Then all you have to do is touch the check mark and save a copy and you're done. So try that first. It might work. Most of the time it doesn't work for me because I have my own preferences of what I want the picture to look like. So what we'll do in Tune Image is we touch the screen and slide up and down to see the range of options and there are a lot of them. Touch the screen, slide it up, you see this black box full of a number of different options. Brightness at the first, ambience, contrast, saturation, shadows, highlights, and warmth. Each one of these is an adjustment in and of itself. You can adjust one or none of them or all of them or adjust them, each one and then go back and readjust until you get the picture to your liking. So let's start with just as a personal preference, I always do brightness last. You can do whatever you want, but I do it last. I always start with ambience. So let's start with ambience. When I touch it and slide the box to ambience and let go, it is now set for ambience adjustments. The adjustments are made by sliding your finger to the right or left on the screen. So if I touch the screen and slide right, I get that message off my screen, touch the screen and slide right, you can see the indicator up here it goes from negative 100 to a positive 100. Go to the extremes. See what happens and what it looks like so you get an understanding of what it's doing. When you're at zero, that's where the camera image started. So if I get back to zero here, this is where it starts. I'm particularly watching her face. So if I use two fingers on the screen and stretch and move together, I can see her face as I play with this. I'm going to slide it right to positive and you'll see it darkens her face. Go too far and it gets an ugly grotesque color but I like it right about 40-41 oh, ish. I like that. So my ambience is done. I'm going to slide two fingers to get the picture back to see the whole picture. And then I'm going to touch and slide from ambience to contrast. Same thing again, move right and move left. Move left, it takes away all the contrast. Move right, it adds contrast. Start at the baseline of zero and find the point you like. Me, I like to add a touch, a touch of contrast, say 25, 27, there we go. Then I move to saturation. Again, you can desaturate by going clear down to negative 100. And desaturate is another word for saying it turns black and white. Or you can oversaturate all the colors, going up to 100. And of course, that's way, way too much. And it's easy to overdo saturation. So again, starting from zero, or close to zero here, I'm going to increase saturation just, say, up to 35-ish. That increases the color saturation here and does not distort her face too much. 
Then I move to shadows. I play with shadows again back and forth. Just go back and forth, right or left, till you find what you like. I actually like shadows here, almost where the camera started. Um, zero. Let's see. I'll go negative, negative eight. I'll move up to highlights. And you can go all the way right. This white in the waterfalls washed out or you can go left and you bring that tone down but it ruins everything else so just find what you like again I'm gonna go highlights probably here about plus seven and I'm gonna push it up to warmth and warmth again if you go negative gets a blue a real cool color if you go positive it gets it an orange yellow color so starting at the baseline of zero, I'm going to go, yeah, not much, up to about a negative nine. And as always, after every single adjustment or any time during the process, you can look at the original picture compared to what you've got on the screen by touching this icon up at the top. Original picture, retouched picture. Original picture, Washed out colors, not saturated, skin on their faces, a little light. Afterwards, that's what it looks like. Retouch afterwards. When you're happy with it, uh, maybe too much saturation. So let's go back and slide up and down to saturation. And move it and then slide right or left. It was at 35. Let's move it down to, say, 25. Check it again. Original, final. I like it. You like it? Done. Play with it in any combination when you're done. Click the check mark. Click the save. And save a copy. Always save a copy. There you go. Now you're done. It's easy when you know how. It's easier once you've done it a time or two. And it's easiest when you do it often. So find some photos. Play with these combinations. Use them to your own little formula of what your personal preference is for the final picture. Do it over and over. It's fun and you'll enjoy it.